To start, do you remember that time Nintendo snubbed Sony when they were working on a CD-based add-on for the SNES? Well a prototype of that failed collaboration has been found, and it doesn't look like a fake. It comes with a Sony branded control pad, a test cartridge, and an untitled CD. The person who found the system is posting more images on the Assembler Games message board, and you can find the thread using the link in this video's description. Second up is the news that a Kickstarter has been launched to create a documentary called Insert Coin, Inside Midway's 90s Revolution, which will look at the studio's biggest hits including Mortal Kombat, NBA Jam, and Cruising USA. It was over halfway towards its funding goal last time I checked, with around two weeks remaining. Fingers crossed it makes its target. In other documentary news, a look at the Shenmue series is also being created, although no release date has been given for it just yet. To finish off this section though, there was the sad news that Nintendo's president, Satoru Iwata, died of cancer at the age of 55 last month. He had a hand in creating some of the company's most timeless creations, including Kirby, Earthbound, and Balloon Fight. A fan even created a version of the latter with Iwata as the hero. On my business card, I am a corporate president. In my mind, I am a game developer. But in my heart, I am a gamer. First up, the 3DS's eShop saw just one retro release in July, a 3Dized version of Streets of Rage 2. Sega also announced that Sonic 2 is to receive the same three-dimensional treatment. In fact, it's already out in Japan. In comparison, the Wii U's eShop saw several retro offerings, including four Game Boy Advance ports. Advance Wars 2, Black Hole Rising, Mega Man Battle Network 4, Red Sun and Blue Moon, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Revival, and Final Fight. The service also received a port of the lesser known N64 title, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Moving on to the PlayStation Network, the PS3 and 4 received what is possibly the most inexplicable remaster ever, an anniversary edition of the little known PlayStation 2 title, Legend of K. After this I'm expecting a reboot of Voodoo Vince any day now. PS4 also got Arcade Archives Karate Champ, which looks to be a straight port of the 1984 action title from Data East. You might want to wait for a price drop on it though. Finally, mobile devices got a little retro joy in July, first with a remake of Gabriel Knight, Sins of Our Fathers for iOS and Android devices. Second, Qbert Rebooted arrived on iOS. I actually reviewed the desktop version of this over a year ago and said the following about it. It's probably worth a shot for those who are a fan of the original, but for anyone else it's not something to get too excited about. But you don't have to take my word for it. You really should though. Two do-it-yourself kits adding RGB output were released last month, with the first being for the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics 16. It's called the TJES RGB, and one will cost you 39 US dollars. The second is for the Atari 2600, and is fittingly titled the 2600 RGB. It will have just gone up for sale when this video has gone live, so check the site linked in this video's description for full pricing details. Moving away from all that RGB nonsense, there's the GG LCD, which is a DIY solution to improve your Game Gear's display, and also boasts the ability to output video from the handheld onto televisions and monitors. The board cost £49, but they sold out pretty much as soon as they became available, so keep checking the creator's site for when more become available. To round off this section, the Commodore PET was released, which is effectively an Android phone with two preloaded Commodore 64 emulators. Not too much happened on the retro homebrew front in July, but there was a port of the cult classic Bad Apple for the Vectrex. The rather nifty looking Tron inspired Tro Now was also made available for the Mega Drive as part of this year's Bit Bit Jam event, which is a homebrew coding competition. Then there was the news that a Bomberman homage called Roby Blaster is set to be released for the ColecoVision. No launch date has been given for it just yet though. Finally, I wasn't going to mention it, but someone has managed to create a version of Half-Life for Android Wear. 
it's time to choose. There was a surprisingly large number of fan translations in July, with six for NES titles. These include Flowering Star Highway, The Island Caper Spy vs Spy, Crash and the Boys Ice Challenge, The Magic Candle, Family Jockey, and Big Strategy Pachinko. There was also a translation for Game Boy title Ultraman Legend of the Super Warrior, and Echo Knight 2 The Lord of Nightmares for the PlayStation. Then to round off things there were translations for two SNES titles, Romancing Saga and Galaxy Robo. That's all for this month then, but as always, I've assembled a list of links to almost everything mentioned in this episode in this video's description. Thanks as always for watching, and if you want to support this channel even more, please do consider liking this video, leaving a comment, and even sharing it with others you think might find it interesting. I can only bow to that decision.